Michelle from Birdcage and Thread here with a tutorial for an insulated slimline lunch bag that I designed. There's no written pattern for this bag as the pieces are just rectangles and squares and this tutorial will walk you through each step. I designed this bag to hold the 30 ounce Jumka food container from Ikea. Now I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly but I'll put a link in the description box below. This is the 30 ounce size and they come in a pack of three. There is a larger size, but this is the smaller size. Once again, it's 30 ounce or 0.9 of a litre. You can fit this in either vertically with a water bottle or a can of soda next to it, or you can place it horizontally. I love these containers because they're actually leak proof. I've got water in here, and as you can see, it's not leaking. So the bag itself is fully lined and all the seams are enclosed. You can see the lining there. The bag itself is approximately 9 inches square and a little over 2 inches deep. The slimline design makes it easy to transport in messenger style and tote bags or can be carried on its own. It features a carry handle at the top and it's also lined with a layer of insulated bright which is an insulated batting. So the sewing gets a little bit bulky towards the end, but it's a fairly straightforward bag to sew. I'll put the measurements in the description box below, but I'll also talk about them throughout the video. So let's take a look at what we need to sew this cute lunch bag. To make the lunch bag, you'll need the following. Half a yard of outer fabric, half a yard of Insulbrite, Bright, which is a sew-in insulating fabric, half a yard of lining and one yard of SF101 which is a medium weight fusible woven interfacing. You'll also need a number four and a half handbag zipper which is at least 16 inches long. Don't substitute this zipper for a regular number three as you'll need the zipper tape to be one and a quarter inches wide. Next you'll need some one inch wide webbing. I have nylon here but you can also use cotton webbing just make sure it's one inch wide and you'll need 11 inches long of the webbing. Finally, I'm using some hemming tape, which is kind of like a sheer ribbon. I'm using this to make pull tabs at either end of the zipper, making it easier to open and close the zipper. This is optional and you can substitute anything you like. Some suggestions are ribbon, tape, cord or even fabric strips. So let's get started on cutting the fabric. From each fabric, you'll need to cut two squares, one 14 inch square and one nine and a half inch square. In other words, you'll have a 14 inch square and a nine and a half inch square of outer fabric, insulbrite, bright, lining and SF101 interfacing. So that's the nine and a half inch square and these are the 14 inch squares. You'll also need to cut fabric for the handle. I'm using the outer fabric, but you can mix it up by using the lining for a bit of contrast. So you'll need to cut fabric and SF101 interfacing 11 inches by two and three quarter inches. Firstly, fuse the SF101 interfacing to the wrong sides of the lining fabric of the 14 inch square, the nine and a half inch square, and the handle. So just make sure that you fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of those fabrics. Next, you're going to place the insulbrite bright against the outer fabric of the nine and a half inch square. The insulbrite bright has two sides. One will be a little bit shiny and the other side looks more like regular batting. Place the side that looks like regular batting against the wrong side of the outer fabric. Now you need to secure the insulbrite bright to the fabric. You have a few options. I'm using a fabric spray to lightly coat the back of the fabric then stick that to the dull side of the insulbrite. 
Just let the glue dry before moving on to the next step. Another option is to quilt the two fabrics together. If you choose to quilt, just remember to cut the squares of the outer fabric and insule bright a little larger as the fabrics will shrink slightly when quilted. The last option is to base the two fabrics around the entire square using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Then you're going to repeat the same with the 14 inch square. So this is what you should have so far. A 9.5 inch square of both the outer and lining. But the outer has the insule bright fused to it or quilted. Then the lining with the SF101 fused to it and the same with the 14 inch square. And you'll also have your handle with the SF101 fuse to it. You can put the 9.5 inch squares aside for now and we're going to work on the 14 inch squares. So you're going to cut from each corner of both of these 14 inch squares, you're going to cut out two and a quarter inch squares. You can do it separately for each square but I'm just going to put one on top of the other and do the both together. So again that's two and a quarter that way, two and a quarter that way. You're going to cut out those squares and repeat the same for the other three corners. So this is what your 14 inch square should look like. So you have a two and a quarter inch square cut out of each corner of both the outer and the lining. Next we're going to slice it so we can insert the zipper. So to do this find the top and if you have a directional print like I do this will be the top here. So measure from this top section down three and three quarter inches from this top edge here. I'm just going to draw a line but you will cut along that line there. Then you're going to repeat the same for the lining. If you don't have a directional print it doesn't matter which um, side you measure from. So just do the same. Again that's three and three quarter inches from this top section here. And you're going to cut along that line and that's where we're going to insert the zipper next. Just as a note, if you've chosen to base the insule bright to the outer fabrics around the edges, before you cut along this line, sew a line of stitching about an eighth of an inch away from this line on both sides. That will just help hold the insule bright to the outer fabric. Remember that's only if you've basted around the outside only. If you've quilted or glued the fabric to the insule bright like I have, there's no need to do that. Next we're going to insert the zipper. But just to recap, the 14 inch square has been sliced. So now we have an upper section and a lower section of both the outer and the lining. So just place the lower section aside for now and we're going to work on this upper section. So firstly you need to decide with your zipper whether you want, to open, want it to open from left to right or from right to left. I'm going to have mine opening from left to right. So with the upper section outer facing up you're going to place the zipper tape right side down and you're also centering the zipper on this long edge here. You're going to clip that in place or you can use pins too of course. Then you're going to take the lining and place it right side down, matching up all the raw edges and matching this long raw edge along the zipper tape and then clip that in place.
Next, using your zipper foot, you're going to sew a seam along this zipper tape here. Now the seam allowance is going to be in between a 1 quarter inch seam allowance and a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So just go halfway between those two seam allowances. Then you're going to repeat the same with the other, with the lower section of both the outer and lining. And you're going to sew that to the other side of the zipper. So this is what it should look like once the zipper's inserted. If you're having trouble with the fabric slipping, you can baste the lining first to the back of the zipper, and then flip it over and then do your final seam with the outer section. So once you have that in place, you're going to open out the fabrics away from the zipper. That's the lining and that's the outer. Then you're going to press them with your iron. Now before we top stitch along here, we're going to make sure that this length along here equals the nine and a half inch square that you've you've cut. So once this is pressed and before you top stitch, just line those two up to make sure that they meet. They're the same length, I'm sorry. So once you're happy with that, you can top stitch catching both the lining and the outer along both these seams here. Now that the zipper's installed and you've top stitched along both edges there, just again make sure that the nine and a half inch square equals this length here. Then we can put this aside for now and we're going to work on the handle. Next you're going to take your handle piece which has the SF101 fuse to it. Then you're going to fold it in half wrong sides together lengthwise and using a quarter inch seam allowance you're going to stitch along that long edge there. Now you've sewn a seam along the handle here we're going to press the seam allowances open before we turn it right side out. So give it a finger press first, put your finger in the seam allowance there and just finger press that open slightly. Then with the seam on top, you're going to push down so that seam is now centered like that. And you're going to take that to your iron and press. Again, just making sure that seam is centered along the handle like that. Now your seam allowances are pressed open and that seam is centered along the handle, you're going to turn it right side out. I just have a tool here for turning, but you can use any method that works for you. Once you've got it turned right side out, you're going to recenter that seam and press. Now the handle's been pressed flat and that seam is now centered, we're going to insert the webbing inside the handle. So I have a quilting safety pin here. I'm just going to put that on the end. Don't put it too close to the end, otherwise the webbing will start to fray. Just insert that into the tube and work your way up. Once it's at the end, you can remove the safety pin. And then you can trim the ends of the webbing. Then 
then just line up the raw edges of the webbing and the fabric. Next you're going to top stitch along both these folded edges here about an eighth of an inch away from both edges. Now the handle is complete with the top stitching both sides you're going to measure in two and a half inches from each side each end of the handle and using a removable marker you're going to make a mark across the handle. So repeat for the other end Again, that's two and a half inches from this short raw edge here. The next thing is to attach the handle to this top section here. So firstly, move the lining out of the way, so push it down towards the bottom, as we're only going to be sewing the handle to the outer fabric and the insule bright only, not the lining. So take your ruler and place it along the raw edge along here and you're going to measure down from this raw edge seven eighths of an inch and you're going to butt your handle up against the ruler so it's seven eighths inch down from that raw edge next you're going to line up one of the short raw edges with this raw edge here of the bag next you're going to sew the handle down following this line of stitching pivoting at the point that you marked earlier, pivoting again and back down the, that line of top stitching. Once that's complete, you're going to repeat the same with the other side, just matching up those raw edges. Then sew along that top stitching, pivot, sew across the handle, pivot and back down that line of top stitching. Now the handle is sewn to the top. And you can see that it's only sewn to the outer fabric, not the lining. We're going to box these corners of both the outer and the lining, but we're going to do them separately. So firstly, you need to separate the outer and the lining and then fold them together. Now, when you do the ones up here, it's easiest if you open the zipper. It just bends a little easier. So with the right sides together, you're going to fold those two corners and have them meet like that or fold those two edges at the corner. Now rather than sewing from the edge of the fabric down to the fold, you're going to mark a quarter inch in from, mark it from the fabric if your um, insule bright has shifted. So mark a quarter inch in from this edge, then you're going to sew from that quarter inch point using a quarter inch seam allowance across down to the fold. You're going to do the same with the lining. And again mark quarter inch in from this raw edge here. So this is a quarter inch seam allowance from here but you're going to start your stitching a quarter inch in here all the way down to the fold. Then you're going to repeat the same with all the corners, making sure you do the lining separate to the outer. So this is what you should have once you've boxed all the corners. So that's the top section. And that's the bottom section. Now with each of the corners, you're going to press the seam allowance open. You can see where you've started a quarter inch in. So you're going to press those seam allowances open and just press where it's folded, just press that flat. Same with the outer. You're going to press the seam allowances open at each corner and you can see there that you've started a quarter, it's stitching a quarter inch in. So you're going to have that gap at the beginning. Now with the top section, it's probably a little hard to press open with the iron, so just finger press it open.
So now you're going to place both the outer and the lining wrong sides together. And push the lining inside the outer. Then you're going to repeat the same with the bottom. See, placing the wrong sides together, lining up all the raw edges along here. Then you're going to either pin or wonder clip those raw edges together. When you get to a corner, make sure that the seam allowance of each corner is pressed open and lined up. And again, you've got that gap that you left at the beginning of each um, corner. Then you're going to baste about an eighth of an inch away from the raw edge all around the side, the bottom, and up the other side to meet the zipper here. Then you're going to repeat the same with the top, lining up those corners and baste the lining to the outer till you get to the zipper here. Now that you've basted it around the raw edges, you can see the lining is now sewn to the outer around these raw edges. We're going to trim the zipper. So just line up the two raw edges there of the open end of the zipper. And you're going to trim those. Once you've cut the excess zipper tape off, you can baste the zipper teeth together. Now that your open end of the zipper is basted closed, if you're adding the zipper tabs or the zipper pulls, you can add those now. So just fold the ribbon or whatever you have in half, place that over the top of the zipper, and then baste across using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Then repeat the same for the other end. You can make these tabs as long or as short as you want. Now the tabs are sewn on to either end of the zipper, you can trim off the excess zipper and any overhanging tab. going to stitch the bag front to the bag back which this is the nine and a half inch square of fabric so start by turning the front so that the outer is on the inside like that then at each of these corners you base you'll need to cut your basting stitch where this gap is so it can open out like that do that at each of the four corners. We just need the this gap to stretch out. So again, just cut the stitching. Then you're going to place the right side of the back to the right side of the front. If you're using a directional fabric, just pay attention to the direction of your fabric when you're placing this square down on the front. Then you're going to line up this long raw edge with the top, but you're going to start 
a quarter inch in from that corner like that so start at one end and then go to the opposite end and pin that or wonder clip and again it's quarter inch in from the edge then pin or wonder clip the rest of that seam or that edge then you're going to sew using a quarter inch seam from that edge there just that little edge there of the front you're going to sew along there till you get to this other edge here and remember to back stitch the beginning and the end of your stitching so this is what you should have when you've stitched that line of stitching there just remember when you start the stitching to begin at the bottom point of that V there and then stitch along and then finish again at that bottom point of the V there next you're going to turn it 180 degrees so you're going to work on the bottom then you're going to do the same thing again starting quarter inch in one to clip that in place go to the opposite end again quarter inch in from the end and then one to clip the rest of that seam along there just make sure that the fabric is of the the back is getting caught in the seam as well then you're going to repeat just as the same same as you did at the top you're going to start at that bottom V point there stitch across here till you get to the other side at the bottom of that V there and back stitch now we've sewn the seam on the top and the bottom we're going to do the same for the sides so you can see the the split in that corner is going around the corner of the front so just as you did before place a clip at the start go to the other end and then have that split go around the corner like that and then clip the rest of it in place Then just as you did before you're going to stitch from that corner all the way down here to this corner point here once you've sewn along this seam you're going to do the same with the final side along this seam here now we've sewn all four seams along here we're going to attach the lining to the front so you're going to squash the front down and you're going to place the lining right side down over the lining of the front now it might seem a little bit odd to do that but trust me it'll work so just as you did before it might be easier just to do one seam one edge at a time take it off your machine adjust your fabric and then do the next seam or you can do opposite seams and then do the side seams 
but you will need to pick a seam that you'll need to leave a gap for turning. I'd suggest about five inch opening so that you can turn it right side out. I'm going to choose to do it on the bottom seam. So when I go to sew this bottom seam here, I'm going to start and stop my stitching a couple of inches in. Leave a gap here and then continue on with the stitching to the end. Then once you've sewn all those four seams with one having a gap for turning, you're going to turn it right side out. So this is what you should have once you've sewn the four seams and one of those seams you've left a gap for turning. Now when you sew these four seams it is a little bit bulky but just take your time and squash the fabric down and push it out the way of where you're sewing. So just take your time. So now you're going to turn the whole thing right side out. So when you turn it right side out, it'll turn to the lining side. And you're going to fold over the raw edge of the back lining and you're going to stitch it closed along there. Preferably hand stitching, uh, but if you really want to machine sew it, just make sure that you're sewing the lining fabrics only, that you're not catching the outer in that seam. So once you've sewn that gap closed, you can open up your zipper completely and then turn it right side out. And you're going to push all those corners out. Just pushing them out with your fingers is sufficient. Same with the top corners. Then once you've turned it right side out, you're going to take it to your ironing board and press. So it's best to press from the lining side like that and you can also press the outer and that's your lunch bag complete I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and once again thanks for watching